So we're going to build, uh, start building models, exponential models, and applications, and and while some of this this is all textbook based, I mean this really does happen in the real world. People are trying to decide on how they can build a model, and make predictions. That's what it's all about. So this Stu Schwartz gives us this exponential model, and now remember, growth is when something's when a population is increasing or money or whatever. And decay is when it's decreasing and it and it goes down as time goes on and growth increases as time goes on. Um, that's why he says, hey, you take your rate of growth and you add it to one. Now, the reason it's added to one is just like what we did with the, with the financial stuff. You have 100% of your money or 100% of whatever you're starting with and you're adding on some, some percent and we make that a decimal. If it's decay, you starting with 100%, but it's decreasing every year in this case. We don't have to worry about compounding here, but uh, it, it's because this is annual growth. Um, and whoops, I, yeah, I subtracted right. Okay, so just keep that in mind um, for growth and decay, how you find those rates. So for the first question, this says uh, our, our number of bacteria doubles every hour, okay? So if it's doubling every hour, that means... Um, it's twice as big, right? I take if, so if I have a thousand in this first hour at time zero at time one, I'm going to have two thousand. Well, what's our greater growth here? I mean, because we're trying to do it the same way, so we don't have to think too hard about this. Well, what's one? What's two thousand? The new minus the old value divided by the old value. That percentage change that we were working on earlier this year. Well, that's, that's uh, 1,000 divided by 1,000 is 1, or 100%. So our R is 1, or I guess we could write, well, how do they want it here? The rate of change, a decimal greater than 0. So we're not going to write it as 100%, we're going to write it as 1. Our initial value is 1,000, and it doubles every hour. The number of periods it takes for that doubling to occur well, that's every every hour, so that's one hour. So now we're going to write the equation. So we're going to write uh, P of T, or we'll write P, uh, let's write P of T. P of T equals 1,000 times, now if you think about, I'm not going to write this out, but if you think about, it's 1 plus my rate. So 1 plus 1 is 2 raised to the T. So that's the equation. Now, some of you are going to ask, couldn't I have just, if I knew it's doubling, couldn't I have just stuck the two in there? And that's certainly right. You could have. I'm trying to teach you a way that will work for every kind of problem that we give you. Okay. Um, so let's see. Now we're going to draw a graph. Well, I'm going to be lazy and throw that onto my calculator. Plus, I want you to get you used to using those calculators. So how do we get our calculator to graph things easily? So I, I put the equation in y1, you know, I pre remember I pressed uh, wind, uh, y equals, and then it got me to the screen. I typed that into y1. So then I knew, well, let's see, I knew I don't really care about negative x equals negative numbers because it doesn't make time, sense to have time as negative here. So I did use negative 1, though, just so I can see the y-axis. And I knew I had wanted to have the maximum value of 12, because it's saying on the graph it on when, when, uh, after 12 years. And then I want to go down below the y-axis, because though, even though I can't have a negative population, I, I wanted to see that uh, d down below the x-axis, I'm sorry. I want to see that x-axis. But then I was having a hard time coming up with, what's my y-max? So one trick you, that you can do, and, and if you need to see this in live, ha ask me, um, what you do is you press var. So I came down to my y max, and let's see, I remember I already have that equation in y1. So I press vars, and then you arrow over to y vars, and then you'll see y1, y2, y3, and I typed y1, and then I did a parenthesis, and I typed in 12. And what this is, they're gonna this is gonna drop 12 into the x value and calculate it for me. And then once you do hit graph, you get this. You can just kind of put that, you know, on this kind of thing. I mean, because it's such a weird, weird scale. Just kind of trace it on there like that. 
what I want you to see out of this is this is definitely an ex exponential growth equation. That's basically what it looks like. And it's our scale that makes it look like it doesn't grow very fast, right? Because when we're way up here, at, uh, what are we way up here at for a y value? I'm looking, um, when I look at my calculator, it's giving me, I'm up at a little over 4 million is the y when x equals 12. So it's, it's quite a large growth. For the next question, asks how many bacteria will be present after 8 hours and 15 minutes? Well, that is 8.25 hours, right? Because 15 minutes divided by 60 minutes an hour is a quarter. So what I did is I just, I mean, I could substitute in, uh, I could write 1,000 times 2 raised to the 8.25. I can also, since I've already got on my calculator, just hit trace typed in 8.25, and I got that value, which is, what is that? It's about 304,000. So 304,000, let me get a pen going here. So 304,437 bacteria. So then, how do we determine mathematically, which means algebraically, when will the number of bacteria be a million? So now we need to start digging out our logarithms to do this. The equation I'm going to solve is 1 million, 10 to the 6, uh, you got 10 to the 6, equals 1,000 times 2 to the t power, or the x power here. Let me write that with red just so I can see it a little better. So I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by 1,000. And that means I'm crossing off three zeros off this. Uh, you know what? I had a hundred million. I just didn't have a million. That didn't make sense to me here. Let me get an eraser. 10 to the 6, six zeros. So I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by a thousand. So that means I have 1,000 equals 2 to the t. Well, in order to solve this, I want to write this, you know, it's an exponential equation I don't know the answer to. Let's write it as a logarithm. So log base 2 of 1,000 equals t. Well, now I can use change of base. I can say log of 1,000 divided by log of 2. And, I mean, you don't have to do this, but log of 1,000 is 3 over log 2. So now we're going to crunch that on a, on a calculator. So let's see, 3 divided by, let's see, 3 divided by the log of 2. I got 9.966 years. So 9.966 years if I round it. So how can we check this graphically. So I went back to y equals. I typed in 10 to the 6th in y, in, in y2 or 1 million if you want. And now I'm just going to press graph. And I'm seeing that it, that's where it's graphed. Or, I mean, I'm seeing that's that intersection point. So then there's a couple of ways to do this. You can just you could just hit trace and type in 9.966 uh, and see if it's where they intersect. It's pretty darn close. Look what I'm seeing. You can also use that second calc intersection option, and it asks you first curve, second curve. What's your guess? And it tells me the a little more precise, but not any, not any, not much more precise. Okay, so that's how you do this kind of problem. Let's do another one. So I didn't point this out in the last problem because it was just it tripled every hour or doubled every hour, so it wasn't an issue. But see here, I was doubling it triple triples every two hours. Well, the n is going to be in this case we're going to be two. So, and we got to worry about this because if it if it takes two hours to triple, well, 
uh, that means after two hours, there's only going to be one time where it tripled. Or if it's been four hours, it'll be four times, or two times since it's been tripled, because four divided by two. If it's been six hours, it'll be uh, th only three tripling periods. If it's only been an hour, there's only been a half a tripling period. So we've got to, got to worry about that. Um, so how much, same problems it says. So we're starting with 1,000 bacteria. Um, the R here is a little tricky, and what I'm going to do is I'm kind of going to slough over that uh, because there's a, the, the R is going to be like the hourly rate or the unit rate, and it adds a little level of difficulty here, so we don't always have to worry about that rate, okay? So what I'm going to do is, as some of you noticed in the last question, uh, if it doubles, we can just stick a 2 in for the base, so I'm going to erase that and I'll write R, but I'm going to write B. And in this case, we're going to have a base of 3. And then N every 2 hours. So let's see it for the formula, it's every 2 hours. So now we're going to write an equation. Well, now that we've taken some shortcuts, I'm going to write 1,000 times 3 raised to the T over 2. Okay, so now to graph it, I'm going to do the same kind of thing. I'm going to put this equation into, into y1. I'm going to come down to my window and do y1 of 12. And that'll tell me the, that'll tell me the window to sketch that. So there's the equation I typed in. And now for the window... I use those settings, and then to get the graph, notice it doesn't look any different on the scale so I'm just going to sketch a little graph like that a little exponential growth equation okay question C how many bacteria after 8 hours and 15 minutes or 8.25 hours again I just let the calculator trace it and calculate it for me and again I could have taken uh, 8.25 and just substituted it into my equation if you prefer to do it that way so 8.25 divided by 2, so you get to calculate that value, 3 to that power, then times by 1,000. Got to follow order of operations. And then notice it didn't grow as fast. Uh, even though it's tripling, it does it has to do it every 2 hours, so it's not, it's not growing as fast as the other model. So let's do the some algebra for the next one. That's the equation I'm going to solve. Set that original equation we made equal to a million, going to divide by a thousand, cancel out three zeros. Okay, so t to the over t over two. Now I'm going to rewrite this as a log question. So log base three of one thousand equals t over two, and we're going to use the change of base formula. So uh, log of a thousand divided by the log of 3 has to equal 1 half t or t over 2. I really want you to be able to get used to being able to think of it as a, a t over 2 is the same as 1 half t. It makes your life so much easier to be able to be aware of that. So then, like I did before, well, log of 1,000 is 3. So th 3 divided by the log of 3 is some decimal. So I calculated that on my calculator, and this told me that after 12 hours, a little more than 12 hours, or a little more than 12 and a half hours is how long it'll take to reach a million. I went to my calculator to check graphically, and I wrote in Y2, I put in a million, and then I hit graph. And when I tried to graph, 
I got, I didn't, I, this is what I got. I didn't see my horizontal line coming over like it did in the other one. So I said, what's up with that? So I hit my window button and I saw that the Y max on this problem was not at a million. So that's what I had to adjust. I had to adjust, in fact, what I did is I adjusted Y max to 1.2 million. And that's what I typed in. Now what I'm trying to do is, I'm sure, I hope this isn't confusing too many of you, but I'm trying to switch back and forth between this E to the sixth thing and get trying to get you to realize that that means 1.2 times 10 to the 6. Uh, your chemistry teacher will be very happy that I'm having you think this way, that it's switching back and forth between those different different forms. So and that's, that's 1.2 million or, or, or 1,200,000. Now if I hit graph, I'm seeing that it's intersecting off my graph. And if I try to use that intersect feature or trace feature to get the, what was it, 12 point, uh, 12 point something, uh, we're going to get an error. So I could go back in and adjust my, my X max to be a little bit more than that. Now, I didn't show you this, but I changed my X max to 15, and then I used that second calc feature. And lo and behold, look at that number, and there's the 1 million, and that's where they do intersect. Okay? So, algebraically, graphically, build an exponential model where it's a different than uh, every hour. Okay? Okay, so a little bit different rate, and this is going to be that a di little bit different method because of the rate. It's so, that's why I wanted you to think about that 1 plus R trick. So, remember, we're going to start with our some initial value, and it's 1 plus our rate raised to the... Um, t over n, time over how often it takes to do that. Uh, so with this problem, we've got 100,000 people initially. The rate is 0 0.0215, and it's happening every year. So what's the model going to be? So we're starting with 100,000 people. We're going to have 1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.02. 215 raised to the t because t over 1 is is uh, just just t. Uh, now we're going to graph it for the first 50 years. Well, you and I hope you're realizing that if I set this up, it's just going to be an exponential growth of some sort. So why go ahead? We could put it on a calculator to use this later on. I won't show you that here on the video. Uh, how many people are present after 10 years? Well, we can either do 100,000 times 1.0215 to the 10. You can use graph it, hit that trace feature, get the answer. Going to get the same answer either way. Decided just to let the calculator evaluate at the 10 and not, not try to graph it yet. Um, so now, so that's how many, so how many people are there? Well, let's see. I could round, I could not, I could also just truncate. I could just say there's 123,703 because there aren't quite 704. I don't think it would be wrong to say there's 704 people either, but um, it's okay to leave it this way. Uh, so now we're going to have, when is the, determine mathematically when the population will have doubled. Well, let's clean some space. This is the equation we need to solve. When... Does that 100,000 people become 
200,000 people, and I'm just noticing I've got an extra zero here, and it's not letting me erase, so we'll just pretend it's not there. Um, so what do we do? Well, the other shortcut that I want you to start thinking about, if I'm looking for when it's doubled, well, what's going to happen when I divide both sides of this equation by 100,000? Well, what's 200,000 divided by 100,000? It'll be 2. So if you're looking for a doubling time, you just have to set, ignore the initial value, just take that base, raise to whatever power, and set it equal to 2. Saves you a step. It conveys that you understand what's going on a little better. Now we're going to rewrite this as a logarithm. And of course, it's a little weird because we don't have a base that's a whole number. But I can do this. I can write log of base 1.0215 of 2 has to equal t, and then we can just use change of base. You can write log 2 divided by the log of that 1.01 01 or 0215, and that'll be our answer in terms of t, or in terms of time. So that's what the calculator gave me. It'll take, it'll take uh, a little better than 32 years to do this. We'll probably have to say it'll have to be, I guess we could say, 32.6 years would be okay. Um, now, how do we determine this graphically? So, I set up, let's see, what did I do? So, this is where knowing how it's just equal to 2, that equation is equal to 2, helps you change your window so it's not too bad. Now, I knew the answer was 32 something, so I changed my x max to 35, but it let me really shrink my y's up nice, not too big, so I'm not looking at this huge graph. Not that it matters, it's just okay to use the other way, but that's what I chose to do. And here's my intersection. I got the 32.58, and here's what they, I calculated by hand, doing it with the algebra, so we're good. So another another growth problem uh, every four years. So here's what's different here. We've got a double, uh, it's uh, grown steadily every four years, so it takes four years to grow by 12.68%. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this as, what, 5,000 is our initial. Uh, I'm going to use uh, 0.1268, but I've got to remember that I'm going to have to divide that exponent by 4. So what's the equation? Well, 5,000 times 1.1268 raised, uh, raised to the t over 4. Remember, it's 1 plus the rate is how I get that number in there. Oh, let's see. And then I'm going to graph it. Well, as we know already, I mean, it's a exponential growth model. It's going to look something like that. Maybe not so steep, maybe steeper. You know, the big picture. And we can graph it on a calculator for later work. So I've got the equation. Uh, how many people will live in Allentown in the year 2008? Well... From 1919, you don't want to just substitute in um, 2008 into T because that would be 2000. Uh, that, that would be 2008 years since your initial time at time zero. See, at time zero, there were 5,000. If you were to type in 2008, that would be 2008 years. That would be like going from the, the change, uh, you know, went, went from AD, uh, BC to AD, or whatever, common error, before the common error to the common error now. All right, so what you want to do is think about how many years it's been since 1900, which is uh, 108 years. So what you do want to do is, if you not, don't want to graph it, you don't want to do it that way, you could do 5,000 times 1.1268 1 raised to the 108, divided by 4 and get the answer. So that's what the calculator tell, told me, about a hundred, you know, a little over 125,000 people, almost 126,000 people. Now, when will the population reach 100,000? Well, so the algebra is going to be what? That's the equation we're going to solve. And that's why I'm going to take 150,000 divided by 5,000. That gives me 30.
Then I'm going to rewrite this as a log so I don't have to worry too hard about it. In fact, I'm hoping, can we just jump to this? Can I say log 30 divided by the log of 1.1268? Because that's, remember, what I did is I said the log of the base is 1 point, so the base is 1.1268 of 30 has to equal t over 4. And then I'm just going to use the change of base formula to rewrite this that way, and of course that's equal to t over 4, or 1 fourth t, t over 4, not 4 over t. So we're going to calculate this, times it by 4. So this is telling me that about between 113 and 114 years is how long it'll take to reach 100,000. So if we say 114, just to make our arithmetic easy, if this is times 0 is 1,900. So 114 years, it should have reached 100. It should have reached 150,000 in the year 2014. That's as long as this model holds. You're starting to get quite a bit outside of some known data, but that's the statistics idea. Just, just I'm saying it because I want you to want you to be thinking a little bit about do models always hold all the time over over a period of time? And then check this graphically. What are we going to do? So I put in, had the equation in y1, I put 150,000 in y2, I knew, already knew the answer was a little around 114, so I changed my x max to 116, I knew I wanted to see 150, so I set my y max to 160,000, and then I graphed it, I used that intersect feature, and that number agrees with that number, so we check. So this one's decreasing. It's exponential decay. So we got to remember for this, when we, when we find that, if we write the rate, the rate's going to be negative 0.0388. Uh, uh, let's see, an initial value is 7,500. And decrease your rate every two years. We divide the number of years by two. So if you think about that same pattern where we have our, our initial population, the rate, that one plus the rate raised to the uh, t divided by how long it takes to have that rate, uh, it's, for this case, it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.0385. Now, I know when it says exponential decay, you're supposed to minus the rate, but you see how we're already subtracting it? It's, it's going down. Because remember, when you multiply... If I multiply, um, well, let's start with. If I start with a hundred dollars, and I'm losing twenty percent a year, don't you only have eighty percent left? So what's going to happen? It's going to go down. So after one year, you're going to only have eighty. After another year, I'm going to have what's that? Point sixty four or sixty four, and then I'm going to multiply that by point eight again, and so you see how it's going down and decreasing. So how you remember that is, is totally up to you, but in this case, we're going to have to remember it's 1 minus the rate. So the equation is going to be 7,500 times 1 minus that number. So my calculator is telling me that that's 0.9615 raised to the time divided by 2, because it takes 2 years to do that. So that describes the equation. We know the graph. Now the graph, maybe I ought to graph this on my calculator. Because it is a decay equation, so we know it shouldn't be increasing, it should be decreasing. So that's what I typed into the calculator. Now what do I want to use for a window? Well, I know I started at 7,500 and it's going down from there. So my y max would be 7,500. I don't quite know how many years. I'm seeing this 1935 they're going to deal with. Um, which is, uh, what is that, 75 years after 1860? So, um, let's, let's do uh, x max is 100. And that way, that'll cover the 75 plus maybe a little bit that I've got to use. What do I have to calculate that? Live there today. Maybe we should be smart and think about this. Well, today is 2015 when I'm recording this. So that is going to be 140, 155 years, right, since 1860. So I probably want to make my X max be 155 
what the year was a population cut in half. I think we'll cover that. So I'm going to do my X max at 155. So here's uh, my window that I set up for this. Now, uh, something I, I haven't talked about this year, and I don't know if you've teachers before you ever have, is this X scale and Y scale. This is how you change how often the tick marks show. If you just leave it one, you're going to get a whole bunch of tick marks. You won't be able to see anything. It doesn't help to see them sometimes. But if you can change it to how often you want the tick. So notice this is decreasing a lot. I noticed I went a little higher than the 7,500 because I want to see the top of the graph where it intersects the y-axis. Um, so I changed those. So I'm going to see a tick mark every 100 years. Uh, it might not be that big a difference because I'm trying to squeeze a lot of lot of uh, territory into that space of that graphing calculator window. But let's see what it looks like. As you can see, the y-axis is still using every every what did I say every every ten years or even every hundred years. It's those are blurred together pretty much. You'd probably have to go a tick mark every five hundred or every thousand. Which how useful is that? I'm not sure. So there's our exponential decay model. Um, we can see it looks like an exponential decay graph. Okay, so let's keep rolling here. So I decided just to put this in my calculator and I had it trace 75 years because 1935 is 75 years from 1860. Um, again, we could have just substituted and done it algebraically. 7500 times 0 0.9615 raised to the 75 over 2 and got the same answer. Um, how many people live there today? Well, we're going to trace it out at uh, um, the 155 years, right? Because this is 24, 2015 when I'm recording it, and that is uh, not 1960, 1860, which I believe is uh, 155 years, right? So 357 people which would be living there today if we follow this model. And when and what year did the people did the population cut in half? Well, let's do this algebraically. So cut in half. We could say what's half of 7,500. Set that on this side. Have the 7,500 here times 0.9615 to the t over 2. But then we divide this, both sides, by 7,500. What are we going to get? One half. So why go through all that hassle? Why don't we jump right to... We'll write one half equals 0 0.9615 raised to the t over 2. And then, rewrite it as a logarithm, and are you getting fast enough that I can just write this as log 1 half, or log of 0.5, divided by the log of 0 0.9615, equals t over 2, or 1 half t, and calculate that, and double it. So that's what my calculator told me. It, uh, so in 35 years, a little more than 35 years, so that would make uh, 1860 plus 35, 36 years would make 1895 or 1896 um, is when that happened. Verify graphically, and I'm trying to get you to get some number sense here. I went to Y2, and I don't want to think that this is, what is it, 3750? I just want, I just typed in 7500 divided by 2 and let the calculator do for the work. Now I'm going to graph it, look for an intersection. So that's my, here's here's the, the half of 7,500. Here's the original equation. Here's the intersection point, 35.35 years. I don't know if you can see. Yep, there's the same number and same answer. So now we're at a half-life problem. Dr. Carson, your chemistry teacher, will probably have you working with half-life. Um... Now, what's the rate? Remember how all these other problems, they talked about what's your initial value? Well, if I'm starting with 35 pounds of carbon in my body, that's my initial amount. Now i got to figure out what my rate is. Well, if it's a half-life, haven't I lost 50% of the, of the carbon-14 or whatever it is, whether it's me or whatever, I've lost half. So one 
So my, my, my rate, decay rate, not my decay rate, the, the R that I'm losing at each period is 50%. 1 minus 50% or 1 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5. So I can either write that as 1 half or 0 0.5. And then I'm going to take my number of years it has been and divide it by 5730. And I write 3. Fifty-seven thirty, and there's a lot of ways, other ways to write this with base e, and maybe we ought to look at some. But for this problem, uh, that's what we'll write. Uh, so then we're going to draw a graph. Well, it's I know it's a decay equation, so I know it's going to look something like this. Um, how much carbon will remain at fourteen will remain after a thousand years? Well, we can either do thirty-five times 0.5 raised to the 1,000 divided by 5730. So let's see, uh, calculating it by hand, I got that. And then I decided I'd try to, which, which I'd try to graph it. So I, I put this in the Y1. I set this as a window. I did the 2020 for my X max for question E. I just don't want to have to reset that. Um, said my Y max was 35 because that's what we started with. And it's only going to go down from there. And when I graphed it and hit trace, typed in a thousand, I got the same value, which is good. Um, so, part question D asks, how long till I have only one pound left? Well, let's see, one equals 35 times um, 0.5 or one half raised to the T over 5730. So I'm going to divide both sides by 35. So then uh, rewrite this with logs. I will just because it's a little strange. Our base is one half of 1 over 35, whatever that is, is a decimal, equals t over 35. 57.30. So again, we're going to use that change of base formula. So log of 1 divided by 35 divided by the log of 1 half, 0.5, equals t over 57.30. So we're going to calculate this, multiply by 57.30. So that's what I got for an answer. And so what I want you to notice here is, you know, carbon-14 dating is only good for about 30,000 years, give or take some. After, th after something more than 30,000 years old, they need to use a different, different method. Um, so then it says about Jesus Christ, we changed this, it used to be something about Noah's Ark. Okay, so now we're saying, what if, uh, what if, what if Christ wasn't resurrected, what happens here? So how much carbon-14 will be left? Well, let's see. Uh, I think uh, historically we figured that Christ died when he was 33 or Jesus died when he was 33. So that would be the 33 AD. So, so that works out to be a little less than 28 grams left. So that's how that works. So for this one, let's see. You just got a bunch of uh, half-life problem so if we start with a thousand grams we know we have the ratio is a half and then what we got to do is we've just got to take uh, now seconds two minutes so because these are all seconds we're going to want to convert this to 120 seconds instead of two minutes and you're just going to do for each one of these you're going to do 1000 times one half raised to the let's see so 120 divided by 3724, get the answer. The next one you can do 1,000 times 1 half raised to the uh, 120 divided by the 26.91, and that'll be so on and so forth. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Um, if you really want to see the answers for this, I can certainly calculate them for you. Well, hopefully that's a long enough video.